Hi everyone, welcome to Simply Sophie's. I'm your mixtress maven, Sophia. I'm so glad today you came by. I have a couple of things I want to share with you today. One of the uh, questions uh, that I, I get very often when I make recipes or when I give someone a recipe, they ask me this question, what is a carrier oil? Uh, that's what I put in the recipe, I'll say, in the ingredients part, a carrier oil. So today I'm going to address that question, what is a carrier oil? So you stay tuned and I'll be right back with more information. oil. You will see these in my beauty recipes, these terms. Carrier oil, base oil, or fixed oil. They're all the same thing. I'm talking about the same thing. So you will see those names interchangeable, interchangeable in my recipes as well as in other beauty, natural beauty recipes. Now for the most part, I just kind of call them all carrier oils, but sometimes I will say a base oil. So, um, a base oil, a carrier oil, or a fixed oil is a, a oil that does not easily evaporate or is non, it not, is a non-evaporative oil. I think that's the right word. Uh, which means it is non-volatile. Volatile means that the oils you use easily evaporate. An example of a volatile oil will be essential oils. Uh, citrus essential oils evaporate really, really quickly. So that is called vol volatile. Those are volatile oils. They're very precious and they're volatile. A fixed oil, a carrier oil, or a base oil is not, it's, it's a little heavier and it's non-volatile. It does not evaporate really easily. An example, one of the biggest uh, examples of a carrier oil, uh, everyone in the world uses this carrier oil that I have known for cooking and for uh, making beauty products and I have it in my cabinets too and it is vegetable oil. Well vegetable oil is a carrier oil and this is why. Carrier oils are plant based and they're derived either from a nut or from a, a seed. So this vegetable oil here, if you can see it, is a carrier oil because it is 100% soybean oil. So it's a carry oil. So now you know that most of my uh, beauty products or my beauty recipes are made from products that you have in your pantry. Well most of us have soybean oil in our pantry. We use it to fry our chicken, to fry pork chops, you use it in any other recipes. Um, I don't know what else, you can put it in your pasta, whatever. Soybean oil. That's what this is. It is a carrier oil, it is a base oil, and it's a fixed oil because when you use it as base with an essential oil, it helps to stretch the volatility of your oil and it does not, your oil will not easily evaporate. Okay? Now, also, one of the other um, widely used, um, lost my train of thought, carrier oils that I use and that I know is used is olive oil. Can you see that? Yeah. I think you can see it. Yeah, there you go. Olive oil. Olive oil is a wonderful carrier oil. It has so many great qualities in it and is really good on your skin. Well, you can use your olive oil as base when you make hair serums, when you make body oils, when you make perfume oils. Uh, it helps uh, to keep the more volatile oils from irritating your skin. Essential oils really can irritate your skin and it should never be taken directly into your body. It needs to always be mixed with something. You have to be really careful with essential oils. And that, for that reason, essential oils are like the essence of that plant. And sometimes it can really irritate your skin. It can cause all kinds of other uh, reactions in your system. Depends on how allergic you are to them, uh, what their uh, particular characters are. You know, you may have some uh, 
uh, essential oils that could possibly react differently in your medicines. Just all kinds of things. So you have to be mindful. Make sure that when you get remedies and when you get um, serums that one, you do a skin patch test. That means that you have to test your skin if you're introducing anything uh, new to your body uh, by putting a little of that uh, product behind your ear or in the hollow of your elbow or somewhere that is inconspicuous so that if there is a breakout you will uh, it will be in a place that is not easily seen. Uh, having said that, there are other um, other carry oils that I use specifically in uh, my uh, beauty recipes. Now, the reason why I'm going to go over these uh, uh, particular uh, carry oils is because I'm going to use them in my next video. I'm going to be making a hair serum for me and my great grandbaby, who you saw just a few moments ago. Well, she has. Uh, uh, very short hair. She doesn't have a lot of hair and I want my hair to grow and I'm going to use it as a serum or as a uh, scalp conditioner or hot oil treatment for our hair. Uh, the next uh, carry oil, I almost lost my train of thought, is apricot oil. Let's see if I have it here. Uh, I don't have it here. I do have almond oil though. Almond oil here. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. My lighting is not that great, but that says almond oil. Okay, almond oil is a great carry oil as well as grapeseed oil, and they have all great qualities. And I'll go over at some other time what their particular properties are, so that you'll understand it. I will be using these particular oils in the recipe, as I said before. Now, one of the one of my best carry oils that I use in my serums for my hair is castor oil. If you can see that. Castor oil. This is a really good carrier oil. Why? Because the more volatile oils that I use, especially the essential oils, well they may dissipate easily. Uh, ca uh, castor oil is very viscous, it's very thick, and it helps to suspend uh, the other oils in it and it keeps it from evaporating so it keeps my products very rich and very full of um, um, emoll very emollient, I have to get my words right, very emollient and it keeps uh, all of the uh, uh, other botanicals and things that I have, it keeps them all uh, suspended in my product very nicely. Now here's an example of an essential oil. This is Clary Sage that I have. Um, Let's see, here's a cassia bark. It's kind of cinnamony. It smells like cinnamon. Let's see. There you go. Cassia bark. And I do apologize because you can't, my, my camera's not that great. Well, these are essential oils, and we talked about that. These are very precious oils, and they evaporate very easily. And you have to be careful with always putting, with putting things on your skin, as I said before. I have another one. This, was, uh, this one is Pennyroyal. Um, and you have to be careful with that. A, a lot of oils that you get can't always use them. If you're pregnant, you may not be able to use them. You may not be able to use every kind of oil on your baby and uh, on you if you're sensitive to citrus or any other kind of oil. Now, one of the main recipes that I will be using in my product, one of the main ingredients, I'm sorry, uh, is argan oil. If you can see that there. This is Moroccan Argan Oil. I'm going to tell you the truth. I went to the beauty supply store and I got this one. It was a dollar. See if you can see that. There you go. Uh, Argan Oil. This one is better than this one. It's more potent than this. And this one costs the most. I guess maybe because it has this cute little bottle. Uh, also, uh, let me give you an example. I wrote some down. Examples of other kinds of carrier oils that you can use in your products. One is sesame oil. You can use that in your hair product. Uh, flaxseed or linseed oil you can use. Coconut oil, I do have that. Coconut oil is a great carrier oil. Um, what else? Castor oil, I said that. Coconut oil. Uh, metal foam oil. I'm going to be using that in one of my products. Wheat germ oil. Uh, um, Oh, jojoba oil. Uh, that, that's really good. So those are all the different oils that I use the most in my products. Now let me look on here. I'll give you some other ones. Borage oil, um, hemp seed oil, palm oil and palm kernel oil. Those are used a lot in soap making. Uh, let's see, shea butter. 
we all use shea butter. We use it on our hair. Of course, you see that my hair is natural. Shea butter is a great carrier oil. It suspends product very easily and very well because it uh, kind of forms, you know, when it cools down, you can melt it down, but when it cools down, it, it makes a really uh, solid material, just like coconut oil. So that's a really good carrier oil. Your your essential oils and your other more precious oil will suspend very, very well in your shea butter. But I have a little tip with your shea butter. Remember, if you're using shea butter, the very best way to melt shea butter is in a double boiler. I say that because it keeps you from um, scorching your shea butter. You can use it in a microwave, but I would suggest that you only microwave it in 30 second burst. So 30 seconds, you check the oil, shea butter to see if it's melted, put it on 30 seconds again to see if it's melted, then you stir it up. That way you will prevent it from boiling. If it boils, then it will cause your shea butter to be grainy. And uh, I have felt plenty of, I have bought plenty of product from people and I have been sent products to review who uh, uh, people whose shea butter is very grainy and I already know that when it's grainy they burned it so uh, that's just a little tip but just remember 30 second bursts in the microwave or if you have time use it in a double boiler put it in a pot with some warm water sit it on top or something that it won't burn put it in the glass uh, pyrex dish or glass measuring bowl and just let it melt and you can use any kind of stirrer that you'd like to use uh, one other thing almond oil I think I may have said that and if I have anything else on this list uh, neem oil that's really good neem oil is really really good for your skin so now if you guys have any other questions about what a carrier oil is base oil or a fixed oil just Remember that you can always Google things. And then two, remember that there are a lot of products. A lot of people are making products, but you have to be a label reader. It is imperative that you read the labels. And if you're buying products that are naturally made by, you know, someone's made it, make sure their labels are right. Okay, now that's my little tidbit. Uh, again, thank you guys for supporting me. Thank you guys for uh, leaving your comments. Please make sure you rate and subscribe. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can get in contact with me on Facebook and on Twitter. I will leave all of my information down in the description box below. You guys be blessed. Bye-bye.